Wait, Denny need changing. Leave it a fuck away. Do for six. Four factions since time immemorial, Gwen's hand. Welcome. The tourney is on the way. Might I glance at your deck? Sure. Here. An impressive array. Count Monier waits inside. You may enter. Thanks. There you are. A pleasure to see you again. The Skellige faction, how do you find it? It's great. Faction's a pleasure to play. I'm glad to hear it. Any specific tournament rules? Mind giving me an overview? Firstly, might I introduce the contestants? Superb Gwent players all, hailing from the world's farthest corners. Hamal Ochen Dankbali, an Ofieri merchant. Eric van Frog, a patrician from Novigrad. And lastly, we are proud to welcome a Skelliger. Ye blind? Not Skelliger, Skelligirl, damn it! Naturally, no offense meant. Agnetha Skolt, her effort charming isle temperament in evidence, along with assorted beats, baubles, ropes. As to the rules, they're simple. Each player adopts a faction they cannot change for the tourney's duration. Lose a match, and you're eliminated. The winner from among you shall advance to the semi-final to face the winner of the tournay's previous edition, His Excellency the Ambassador of the Empire of Nilfgaard, Master von Hinn. The winner of that match shall in turn face none other than me, your humble servant. Hands off our Gwent! No new fucking factions! Protesters have gathered outside. Quite a few, it seems. Hands off our bloody game! We didn't want any new factions! Money, you dozy cunt! Stop doubling with dwarven tradition! Change cannot always please everyone. Gwent traditionalists resent my efforts to expand the canon to include Skellige, but we shall pay them no mind. Mind telling me what factions the others will be playing? It is no secret. Eric van Frog will play the Northern Realms. His Excellency, in a flush of patriotism, chose Nilfgaard. Hamal Ochendangbali will play the Monster Stack, and Agnetha Skold has chosen Skoyatel. Yours truly, of course, shall await the winner with a Skellige deck. I'm determined to prove its value. Ready to start if everybody else is. I invite you to join me on the terrace. The Herald shall soon announce the tourney's start. Let the tourney begin! In round one, Agnetha Skult faces Eric von Vrog, and Geralt of Rivia plays Hamal on Gangbali. Let's grab a table. A wager would you wish to make? What did you have in mind? Weapons do I collect, and your sword of silver my eye has caught. Should I win, I should take it. Should I lose, to you another equally precious shall I give. All right. So be it.
upon your victory congratulate I you. What drove me to wager a sword against you were not. Clearly to guide me the universe ceased. Here you may it serve well. Never have lost if you hadn't cheated. And my land, folk who slander like that don't live long. Because we don't let them. Accuse me of cheating again, and I'll cut your tongue out. Enough. Hands to yourselves. As Gwent is a gentleman's sport, we expect all its players to demonstrate impeccable manners, and we cannot tolerate any disturbances. Thus, by decision of Count Monier, the contestants from Novigrad and Skellige are hereby disqualified. Gentlemen's sport. Well, I'm a lady, and we ladies don't give a flying fart about a tourney where any measly prick can accuse us of cheating. With round one completed, the standings are as follows. Agnetha Skolt and Eric Van Vrog both disqualified. Geralt of Rivia has defeated Hamel Ong Denvali of Ophir. In the semi-final, Gerard shall face the defending champion, Ambassador Von Heen. I am honored.
Your Excellency, a pure pleasure to play you. The pleasure was mutual, I assure you. Congratulations, Witcher. Stop desecrating Gwent! De de any and all new factions! Seems there's some trouble brewing. Scoot, Olius! Off your asses and hide to Skellige! Yeah, I love it, seal slappers. Please remain calm and stop the verbal attacks. Stop your mum from fucking ferrets, Monier, and hands off our Gwent! Maybe instead of hollering threats, you ought to just explain what it is you want. We've said it plenty of times, yet no one ever listens! Got me listening. Gwent's an ancient pastime. Its rules were set ages ago. Exactly. Determined in keeping with the laws of nature. There should be four factions. That is the optimal number. We'll not tolerate the introduction of any others. It would disgrace the tradition. Aye, leave our Gwent the fuck alone. Enough of this! Then come here to Java but to break fucking heads in defense of tradition! Come on, lads! Triple. Quadruple, even. Enough! I shall summon the guard! I got this count. Sure, you can shut this tournament down, but there'll be another, with who knows what new rules. If you don't like them, don't enter. Play somewhere else, however you want, but you'll never stop other folk from playing however they like. Bollocks! Like my good friend Zoltan Chive says, if one says you're talking bollocks, it could be right. They could be wrong, but if multiples say you're talking bollocks, well, you probably are. So let's take a vote. Who else here thinks I'm full of it? Zoltan Chive? Haven't seen that rascal in ages. How's he doing? Zoltan's just fine. Attention, everyone! Our outing's taken a new turn. We're to sit and drink vodka with Zoltan's pal! Gentlemen, wait. We've still the final round of the tournament to play. I know. Fuck that. Aye, Yaki Raffiberg, to hereby declare my participation in this tournament. And I demand to play the victim. We'll settle whether this Skellige faction is worth a flaming bag of shit once and for all. Agreed, but please show some patience. We must first play a pre final. In the, uh, pre-final, Count Monnier, representing the Skelliger faction, shall face Geralt of Rivia, also playing with a Skelliger deck. My brother's dream has come true. Skelliger in the final, and played by both contestants. Good luck.
nations. The best man has won, playing the best faction to boot. Thanks. Good game. Skellige won! What a bundle of fish! Tournament's not done! Now it's my turn. That is what we agree. Let us resolve our differences here and now. Now to determine the ultimate victor! Geralt of Rivia, playing the Skellige faction, shall face Yaki Raffiberg, playing... Skyatel! Let the better man, or dwarf, win! You can shovel the Skellige mints up your asses! You won because you played better, not because the faction's weak. Aye, right. I knows what I saw. Come on, lads. Let's get soused. No, you must stay, for I wish to treat you all to a tickle. We must toast the premier of the new faction. And if anyone wishes to play a friendly match, wait. I see no reason why not. Thank you for everything, Witcher. <laughs> Don't think that went exactly as you planned. What matters is we played well, and I presented the Skellige faction. You proved yourself a true Gwent master. Here, the grand prize. You earned it. Thank you once more for deigning to take part in my little tournament. I hope we shall meet again. Who knows? Farewell. Hey! Pick her it up. That's my... Knees aches. Mary had a little lamb whose face was so 
wish you health. A valiant docas and kids. A valiant docas and kids. Come on. Stay with me a bit longer, Lady Daphne. You, Jacob? Heal, Mohort. Down. Who asks? A witcher. Saw your notice. Hold up. A witcher, you say? Like in Louis Herrera's tales and fables. Luckier than a green, bleeding leprechaun I am. See? Not a soul around believes this tree is Daphne, the cursed lady of legend. But you, you could lift the curse. Bit too old to believe in bedtime stories, aren't you? Want your chops busted, Witcher? How old I am, that is none of your porking concern. Fair point. Not my business what you believe, either. Ha! Huh. I'm content we see eye to eye. So what makes you think there's a girl cursed inside the tree? Well, I came out with my dog, Moholt, to cut her down. Axe in hand, a broad swing I took. The edge burrowed deep in her trunk, and bum botch me if blood didn't spurt forth. My jaw dropped in the dirt, but right then I knew. Every jot of it in the tale of Daphne Gareth and the Witch of Lynx, Craig. Don't tell me. From Herrera's tales and fables. You talking bet. Second edition. I meant it in Octavo. I know those tales by heart. My nan read them to put me to sleep. Guess she read it cover to cover, colophon included. Got me curious, gotta admit. You really think the old tales are true? Taking the weepy, are you? Do you think me bore me? No, it's just these are dark, grim times. No room for nights pure of heart or happily ever afters. So I don't often run into folk like you. Yes, true, the times are crowd pie. But I see this as all the more reason to remember the tales. My gran would say, if you know not what to do, think to the chessboard knight and noble Alondra and the path they would choose. She schooled me so thorough in it, I could not do otherwise, even if I wished to. Let me take a look at the tree. Careful now. <laughs> Swear I hear sobs in the rustling leaves. Well, Blood. Seeped from the direction of the tree, judging by the shape of the stain. Actually does bleed. Looks like human blood, too. The bark resembles hypertrophic scars in places. Medallions are making a good time. Intense magic at work here, though. Willows isolated. No other trees near it. And? Did you look at the tree close? Mm hmm Actually does bleed. Pretty incredible. Looks... wondrous. Did I not say so? My help doesn't come free, you know. You speak to a lowly woodcutter. No stench of coin about me. I cannot pay that much. I do not have that much. Agreed. I will pay as soon as the young mate is free. Willing to help, but first I gotta figure out where to start. No need. I know it all. 
Miss Daphne and Sir Gareth shared a terrible and fearsome love for each other. Yet to prove himself worthy of her hint, Gareth was to face the Witch of Lynx Crag. Before Sir Gareth set off for the hill, Miss Daphne gave him her kerchief, a token of her favor. Let me guess, he never returned. He did not. She stood here, day upon day, night upon night, trying to spy him. Till she sprouted roots and turned into a tree? Wonder why. I will fecking tell you why. To await the moment when Gareth returns, kerchief in hand. That is the power of love. The power of longing. So you must scale Lynx Craig. Search there for a means to free Daphne. I will give you my book of tales to refer to. And good luck, Witcher. Come on, Roach. Witches. Hot looks inhabited. No sign of the dweller, though. Guess I'll look around. Warm. Smells inconclusive. No idea what ingredients are in there. Bonus. Conclave of mages banned this town. Bones ground into dust. Notes on the use of yarrow stems. Interesting. fresh. Mm. Mm. A wall of spell enhancements, or trophies. Arrow, broken in half. No doubt to bring bad luck to the archer. Branch of a grapevine. Could be to ensure a good harvest, or a bad one. Doll looks like an accessory for casting curses.
silk kerchief, monogrammed DF. Hmm. Could use it to break the curse if it's Daphne's. None but feral cats stray in here most oft, yet it seems I forget from afar at that. What do you seek in my home? Already found it. You do not aim to lift the curse from the tree, girl, do you? What if I do? Then you had best know you waste your time. The old tales? Did your nan not tell them to you? Even I, the witch of Link's Crag, would be hard pressed to overcome the power of love and longing. The Lady's Knight. You ever make it here? Sir Gareth. Yes. He came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. To be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. He stayed a fair while. Then his conscience got the better of him, and he resolved to return to his beloved. Might have resolved to, but never made it. A tragic fate befell him along the way. You have anything to do with this turn of fate? Of course. Was I to let another woman have a man who belonged to me? <laughs> I could not abide it. What if I asked you nicely to lift the curse, please? Gareth met the fate he deserved. And what happened to his witch was not my fault. All right, so you didn't cast the curse. But could you help lift it? I probably could. But why ever would I? I'll humble myself, prostrate myself before you like the Gareth of the Tale did. I beseech you to help me. Lift the curse that imprisoned Daphne in the tree. When I saw you enter my heart, now there is a fellow who shall bend his neck for no one. Stand. None, not even I can restore to the last the years she has lost, can erase the suffering she has endured. We cannot bring her back to life, but I shall tell you how you might let her depart in peace. Yet my aid shall have its price. A lock of your hair? Mm, how can I know you won't use it to cast a spell on me? I require this. I must, for with it I will cast a spell to conceal me from you for all time, and will use it for nothing else. You will nag me never again, and you've nothing to fear, I assure you. I always keep my word. I'll trust you against my better judgment. Lock of my hair's yours. Splendid. What do I need to do? You must convince the maiden her beloved yearned to return, but perished in the attempt. Take her silk kerchief and a fragment of Gareth's remains. His bones lie bleaching in the cave beneath this rock. Fire must consume the kerchief and remains. And remember, your heart, your intentions must be pure. Clear? Yeah. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. And adieu. Once you walk out that door, never shall we meet again.
Knights plate armor and some bones. Gareth's remains. These then wonder why the armor came apart. Magic? Gotta give you just a tree. I lift the curse. So? You met the witch? You must have. What did you learn? That witch? She's not near as bad as folks say. Made me bow and scrape, sure. But I know some sorceresses witchier than her. Joyous, bleeding news, but what about Daphne? I can lift the curse, free her, by performing a ritual, making a sacrifice of her kerchief and Gareth's remains. But we gotta start at the right time. When the hour comes, I'll light four fires for the four winds, then begin the ritual. Fires? Then I shall be of use to you after all. Seems you need wood, much of it. Chop as much as you can. I'll see to the rest. I've chopped and stacked the wood. What now? My turn. Gotta light fires and talk to the woman enchanted in the tree. No idea how this'll turn out. So just in case, stand at a distance. And if you see me draw my sword, run. to the world's four winds. From the south, not a word. From the east, no cry is heard. From the north, silent sighs. From the west, hear hollow eyes. Cease your vigil, dead he lies. Hear me, you who hide beneath this bark. The day of your freedom has come. Behold a kerchief, proof of your love for another. Behold, a bone of he to whom you offered your love. Gareth, my Gareth, he shall never return. No, he won't. Is his love for me gone? Did he stay true? Gareth remained faithful to the end of his days. The time comes that I depart. I've waited too long. 
I've suffered too much, and now I wish to go. Farewell, milady. I thank you, stranger. And you, my knight. I thank you for speaking to me. For standing vigil at my feet. I did not think it would end this way. I hoped we could revive her. But I guess it was not to be. Happily ever after doesn't often happen in life, sadly. You did well. Here, your pay. And the book is yours as well. Thanks. Take care of yourself. So long, Witcher. I must think. Put this straight in my head. <laughs> what the golly blasting devils are you doing, man? What plague? An unfortunate turn of offense, that's all. Get back to chiseling. If we don't deliver that head on time, the infestor will twist my plums off. Is that what you'll tell Emil's widow? That a cow crushed him? And it was an accident? This, sir, is a grave matter. It requires a specialist. Some mage or warlock. What happened here? Look! It's that witcher who's come to town. Maybe he can do something. An exorcism or the like. We should ask how much coin he'll want. Saw your notice. Got a problem with... a cow? Fear a plague, is that it? Yes, indeed, and a horrid one at that. We've earned the gods something true we have. In Zeracania, they've sent a plague of locusts, then of frogs. With us, they skipped right to raining cows town on us. Enough, enough. No need to so panic. Come, Master Witcher, I shall divulge to you the matter at hand. Yes, an unfortunate matter indeed, to be crushed by a cow. A true shame, Emil. He was a good worker. I told them at once there had to be a simple explanation. But that lot, no. Right away they started in screaming, PLAGUE! Demanding higher wages for hardship. Poor working conditions, you see? They'll ruin me, the blotters. Mm, my job is to figure out why a cow fell from the sky. That it? That too. The thing is, since none bother to clear the cow corpse, some filths overrun the other pit. We fear to venture there. Not surprised. Cow? Where'd it come from? What kind was it? Why, the ordinary spotted kind. Nothing unusual. Its corpse rots in the other pit, sends out its stench, and a meal lies right beneath it. Will you tend to the matter and take on the contract? What exactly is going on here? Construction of a statue of the Prophet Lepiota. 
We're carving it. Not all at once, that is, but piece by piece. A pious Infestus revived the project after years of neglect. He's engaged all nearby quarries in its completion. And we would be on schedule were it not for the incident. Please, Master, will you look into it? Need to know more about this accident. Anyone actually see what happened? No, but sounds there were. Osterf had just gone to see how Emil was getting along when suddenly we heard an ear botching boom. Moments later, something smashed into one of the cranes. Doubt it was the cow that hit the crane. Probably true. At any rate, come morn, we ventured out to sea, but the vermin drove us off. With that, all work came to a halt. Has remained so since. Master, tarry no longer, please. Will you take on the matter? Need to talk about my reward before I decide. Ah, time for a good heckle. So how much would you take? Hmm. You must go lower for it to make any sense to me. Hmm. You must go lower for it to make any sense to me. Fine. But that is the sum total. No bonuses or gratuities on top. Understood. Fine. I'll look into it. Might be a botched portal, but I doubt it. Let me also reward you with progeny aplenty. I shall keep an eye out for your return. Must be a meal. Workers mentioned him. Poor guy, unlucky as all hell. Right, now where do I start? Crushed by something heavy. Skull base is cracked. Fresh tooth marks. Necrophages. But they got to him after his death. Won't learn anything else from the body. Tissues crushed in places. Must have fallen from quite a height. sliced open. Hmm. Not much blood, so it happened after death. Heart had already stopped pumping. Tooth marks. Small ones, though. So necrophages left them clearly. Sure sniffed out their feast fast. Deep claw wounds. Spread between talons indicates a draconid. A wyvern, probably. But these wounds weren't the cause of death. Got it. All clear now. Cow died when it fell from a great height. Draconid must have dropped it. A youngster probably trying to get the cow back to its nest, but it proved too heavy. Emil's bad luck to be standing right underneath. And then there's the crane.
reckon it must have hit it pretty hard. Dropped the cow, then probably tried to steady its flight. Got hurt in the process. Good. Should be simple to track down. Traces of draconid blood. Barely perceptible. I'm on the right track. Started bleeding heavily. Wound was more serious than I thought, looks like. made a mess, then moved on. Paw prints. Crawled through here. Clearly too tired to fly. Was in a bad way. Barely crawling. Hmm. Second draconid landed here. A larger one. Waited for the smaller one to heal. Then they flew off together. Should be easy to track. Smaller one was still bleeding, luckily. Flew off together. Probably bound for their nest. Huh, another cow. Been here longer, this one. Lots. What do we got here? Burn marks? Hmm. No wyvern made these. Trail ends here. Nests up there. I bet the farm on it.
sweat dripping down my bum furrow. Well, have you learned how that cow came to fly? Yeah, you can get back to work. And it wasn't a plague of falling cows. Did I not say so from the start? A weight off my chest. So what was behind the animal's plummet? Young Slizzard flying over the quarry dropped it. Was trying to get it back to its nest. Food for its mother and siblings. Probably heard the last of the beasts. Burned the nest, eggs, everything. A praiseworthy precaution, but as I said, I can only pay you what we agreed. I simply haven't any more. Here, take this. And I thank you, Master. All cleared up now, right? No gods, no plague, just the dragon, but it's gone too. We're to pay Emil's widow compensation, and that will be that. So, why do you still stand there and wait, men? Back to work, chop chop! And I've a notion suspicious workings are still afoot. What became of the builders who were to put the statue together? They were due three days back, yet there's still no sign of them at Ardeso. They were crushed too, I'm certain of it. Or eaten, or, or locusts got them like in Zeregania. What's this rubbish you spout now? The architect wrote they would arrive a week late with a large shipment of marble from Metana for the Prophet's beard. So stop flapping your yaps and get to work! Allow me to walk you away, Master. Truth be told, I lied. But I cannot have them panic again. The workers he mentioned, they've indeed vanished. Come see me later, I shall divulge to you the details. So, Master, the workers who vanished, how goes the search? They vanished? What's that mean? Just that. Along with ample supplies. I had placed an order. More than a dozen wagons reached the building site, yet five were lost along the way. Tools, food, building materials, and first and foremost, the specialists we need. The chief architect included. I wrote to the architect to say the quarry awaits. He should send new plans. But the foreman said the architect was here, at Ardaizo. And this means... He's missing too. Got it. I'll look around, see what I can learn. Master, I know not how to thank you, but I beg you to hurry. We shall simply not finish without those five wagons. A job is like a thing. Sound on the nerves, eh? Death. And if I were to put up my wife for surety. See, no, the Duke of Death, the Duke of Dying, don't the Duke of Dog Tickle. Run, Roach. Not good. of it. Kick him worse.
Kick you more eggs. Need to insert the ash. So, missing workers. This is what became of them. Why even bother? What did they hope to steal? Hammers? A hunk of stone? I see. All right. High time I set off.
champion. The bells must give you one. Thank you, good sir. You would be the famous witcher, would you not? Exactly. I shall hitch my wagon and set off for the monument works at once. They await me there. Roach. out. I'm not gonna hurt you. Thank you, Sir Witcher. Let Piotr keep you in his care. Here's the cart. 
Hey, wake up. What? What? Get up. Wake up. Why, oh, Salvatore? Good evening. Wake up. Wake up. Leave me in peace, Witcher. Excuse me, boy. Come on, get up. Saint Lebioda sent you. I must now repair my wagon. They await me at the building site. So long. the hat to the Tawny's victim. Help to finish the statue like you asked. Master, what would I have done without you? Countless throngs of Lepiota's followers will praise in prayer. And you'll pay me, right? But of course, your reward. The investor is a serious man of enterprise. Our plan foresees mass conversions. With the donations that will follow, we aim to recoup the costs of production in three to five years. Everything has been calculated, you see, down to the last decimal. Hmm. Good luck then. Farewell. My hand shakes. The guard brings peace to our domains. Flout its rigged and rotten. Don't crowd around. 
Greetings. A witcher from the School of the Wolf, here in Tucson. Greetings. I'm Lazar Lafarque. Geralt of Rivia. Seem pretty enthused. Got a job for me? Rather. Mind you, it's no monster hunt, but I'm sure you'll be interested all the same. I'm an armorer, see, and I for years sought diagrams for witcher armor of exceptional quality, Grandmaster level. Heard of them. Never seen any, though. Thought they were lost. Not quite. For I've been lucky enough to learn that their holders came to Tucson. Alas, they then perished, but I know where. I just need a partner to help me retrieve them. If you know where to look, why not get them yourself? No offense, but do I look like a rough-hewn adventurer? Besides, who would serve my clients while I romped about seeking them? No, i rather leave it to someone familiar with such matters. Bring me the diagrams, and from them I'll forge for you whatever you fancy. What do you have on offer? All these diagrams somehow wound up in Toussaint? How is that even possible? Tusa was once home to Tien Sail, a legendary and now deceased elfin master armorer. Witches from all corners of the world came to him to forge their plate, their mail. Heard about him. Supposed to have been the best. And thus he charged a king's ransom for his work. Witches would take difficult, dangerous work to earn the coin to pay him. Some, alas, met with misfortune, and the diagrams they carried were left to rot with their earthly remains. Got it. Find them, find the diagrams. But how can I know where to look for their remains? As it happens, I learned my trade at Jensai inside. So I heard the stories of the missing witches first hand. What he told me, well, that is what discouraged me from seeking the diagrams out myself. We must strike a deal. I shall tell you all I know. In return, once you found the diagrams, you will let me draft a copy. This elven master, how'd he end up taking a human for an apprentice? My father forged armor. As a youngster, I helped him, then began forging my own pieces. Master Tien Sail saw my work and offered to take me on as his apprentice. Only now, years on, do I realize the honor that was. Alas, my master perished in a massacre later, slain by racists. Though he taught me everything he knew, I did not manage to complete the guild's requirements for Grand Master while he lived. I know I have no equal in the trade. Yet, uh, until I complete Witcher armor of Grand Master quality, I shall never be certain I've become my teacher's equal. Where do I look for these diagrams? 
I know of five likely fallen witches, each from a different school, of the wolf, griffin, cat, bear, and manticore. Which should I start with? Let's talk about the cat. A year ago, Bartolome de Lorne, the ducal armorer, asked me to confirm the authenticity of a witcher diagram he had received by messenger. You see, at the time he was working on new armor for the ducal guard. A witcher from the school of the cat offered to sell him diagrams for a full set of gear. The diagrams would have been helpful indeed. The diagram you saw, was it really a witcher diagram? Beyond any doubt. It's a shame Delone didn't let me draft a copy. He was quite shaken up, afraid the Witcher might simply kill him and take his coin. Possibly a well-founded fear. Soon after, Delone disappeared without a trace. I would have searched his former home for clues, but it has fallen into disrepair, and it is simply too dangerous there. Tell me about my brother, the wolf. His name was Aton. I remember him well. My master liked him, helped him find a safe, yet well-paid contract. A few years ago, an archaeological expedition arrived in Tucson from Castel Gropia. They questioned my master about the elfin ruins at the Termes. He warned them of the danger there, and recommended they take Aton as an escort. What kind of danger did he mean? Any idea? Legend claims wraiths haunt the chambers beneath Termas. I cannot say if there is any truth to this, but both the scholars and the Witcher disappeared without a trace. The Griffin. What can you tell me about him? He came some... 200 years ago, but my master remembered him well. This Witcher was not stripped of emotions, you see, as his colleagues were. He had taken on a contract at Fort Usa and required better gear. He showed my master his diagrams, paid a deposit, and was never seen again. Apparently, he rode off one night from the fort Never to return. Any idea where he went? No. It said he left in a rush, so he may have left something behind. Only ruins remain of Fort Usa. But you may wish to search them. Tell me more about the bear, can you? He appeared shortly after Master Tiensail took me on as his apprentice. I remember the bare head medallion that uh, hung from his neck. I remember a towering witcher who haggled like a fishwife. <laughs> Witchers never have too much coin. True. This one clearly was not wealthy. But he pledged to bring us coin after he completed a contract at the Tufo vineyard, where a building had just collapsed. Time passed. The bear never showed, and my master sent me to the Tufo estate. As it turned out, the Witcher had indeed accepted a job. Yet that was all they heard of him, and that is all I know. School of the Manticore. Probably know the least about it, though once, long ago, wore some armor forged there. My master said the Manticores have their fortress in the Far East. A century passed, one of their number came to him, a witcher named Merton. He made a poor impression on my master. He stank like a dwarf and still, and uh, quarreled fiercely all the time. Tien Sahil slammed the door in his face and told him to return when he sobered up. He would conduct no business with a drunk. The witcher, however, failed to return. Folk say he got into a booze-fueled brawl with the Ducal Guard. He was arrested and sentenced. 
Bastoy prison, where he was held, well, it's been a ruin for years. Still, you may want to start your search there. Farewell. Good luck on the path. Kessa, Anna, Henrietta. The Witcher's not near as nasty as they make him out to be. Must be Delaunay's residence. Gotta find a way inside. Simply cannot. Oh, let me hold his wounds. Calm down. It's over. I thank you, sir. And you must forgive me my momentary loss of composure. Are you in need of accoutrements, monsieur? Villa looks abandoned. You its owner? More its temporary steward. By order of the Treasury Minister, I am to serve as caretaker of Count Deloni's properties and estates. The Count is missing. Yet, no one at the palace warned me. Villa fit at this the lair of bandits. That is to say, it was, but is no more. Thanks to your heroism, Monsieur Witcher. Looking for scrolls, manuscripts, bearing diagrams of Witcher gear specifically. Any chance you've happened on any? I've not yet managed to inventory the sundries. I arrived just a short while ago. The bandits arrived with their terror. But you may ferret about if you so wish. What do you have that you're willing to sell? Thanks. So long.
tale of a life compromised and ultimately claimed by greed and ambition. Woo! <laughs> 